I'm Ted Keyes in Pasadena, California. Welcome to my Tuesday conference call, a free high-powered meeting I hold live every Tuesday for top producing freight agents. Go to tedkeysonline.com for complete call information. Then join us weekly to see new, serious, struggling, and experienced sales professionals move more freight efficiently, effectively, effortlessly, and make more money financially. So watch my recorded call topic highlighted there on your screen right now. Then go to tedkeysonline.com and hear more podcasts, read more blog posts, watch more videos, and while you're there, visit my freight sales success store for top-notch freight moving products to explode your business today. Enjoy watching and applying my Tuesday conference call. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody out here and then I'll get going with the guts of my call here. Bear with me, folks. Hello and welcome to my Tuesday conference call. I'm Ted Keyes, your host here in sunny Pasadena, California. This is a free high powered meeting I hold live every Tuesday for top producing freight agents at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And on the call today, I'll show you how to move more freight efficiently, effectively, and effortlessly so you make more money financially. Guys, after the call, go to tedkeysonline.com to hear more of these podcasts, to watch more of my videos, to read more of my blog posts, and then while you're there, visit my freight sales success store for top-notch freight moving products to really explode your business today. And while you're at my website, just go ahead to the contact page and enter your contact details and receive your weekly personal invite to this call. And by doing that, you'll also receive my free report, 11 ways freight agents will increase their income. So if you're not on my call, if you're not on my email list, you're not getting these calls, you're not getting the invites to the calls. So go ahead and go to my contact page, enter your, uh, your contact details, and you'll, you'll receive my weekly invite to this call, which is free of charge, by the way. So, my topic for today, my topic for today is titled, Are You Talking At Your Freight Prospects? Let me tell you, or let me explain one more time. Are you talking at your freight prospects? Now, if you're on my call, you did receive my personal invite to the call, go ahead to my, uh, to my email and scroll down to the bottom. There's a number of attachments down there that we're all gonna go over one by one. And uh, as usual, that first attachment that I always put on there is our Green Meadows Productions leaderboard. If you are an agent with our office and you're moving freight, your goal is to see your name on that leaderboard. Just go ahead and open up that, uh, that page there. Your goal is to get your name on that leaderboard. If you're not, if you're not gonna provide any goals for you, I'm gonna provide a goal for you. Your goal is to see your name on that leaderboard, not only see your name on that leaderboard, but your goal is to climb up that leaderboard. Once you see your name climbing up that leaderboard, that means that you are actually moving freight and that you are becoming the success that you have dreamed to be in this profession. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on from there. Go ahead and open that, uh, that second attachment. And let's talk about our topic today. Great topic today, by the way, because a lot of times we have a tendency to, to get a hold of a shipping decision maker and we just want to blab, blab, blab all about ourselves and what great freight service we have. Well, if you're doing that, you're talking at your freight prospect. Is that something you want to do? Absolutely not. Hence, that's why I'm talking today about talking at your freight prospects don't do it. Let me just explain a little bit what that means. Now, you'd think for a freight sales agent, talking a lot about your freight service would be the best way to win a big contract 
or a host of lanes to move for those, uh, those freight prospects that you're talking to. After all, how can freight prospects decide to use you or not unless they know what they're paying for? Well, one of our industry's biggest ironies is that the more you talk about your freight service, the less likely that you actually are to move a prospect's load. While speaking with your prospects is absolutely necessary to move their freight, it's all way too easy to slip from talking to them to actually talking at them. Here's five signs that are easy to spot indicators that it's time to let your prospects take center stage and you, well, you just got to close your mouth and head to the back stage door. So again, I'm going to talk about five signs that are going to be indicators of you talking at your prospects, at your freight prospects. Here's the first sign, guys. The first sign is this question, or it's not a question, but the first sign is this. You talk more than half of the conversation. You talk more than half of the conversation. If you're talking more than half of the conversation, you are talking absolutely way too much, believe it or not. Let me, uh, let me explain a, li a little bit. In general, listening. How many times have I talked or how many different calls have I talked about listening? But here we come back again to that topic of listening is the way, listening is way more valuable to freight sales agents than actual talking. Believe it or not, I've said it again. It's the best and in the early stages of a, sa of a sales conversation, the only way to assess your prospect's business pain, whether they're being truthful and their level of proficiency in, impl in implementing your freight service that you're calling them on. And listening early on sets the stage for the rest of your sales process, believe it or not. Listening is the number one quality that you have to have as a freight sales agent. If you don't know what your freight prospects business strengths and weaknesses are because you never asked, you won't be able to sell, sell to their strengths or bridge that gap in their weaker areas. If you can't figure out whether your freight prospect is telling you the truth because you haven't heard them speak enough to understand their voice tone, well, then you won't be able to distinguish between true blockers and brush off rejections. Hang tighter, folks. If you haven't fully grasped the root causes of your prospect's business pain, then you won't be able to position your freight service in a way that gets to the heart of the solution or the solutions that they're seeking from you. If you're sensing a trend here, well, then you're absolutely right. Not listening closely severely limits your ability to sell and to move freight for them successfully. It's comparable to scoring a goal without, without actually knowing which team you're playing for. So sign number one, you talk more than half the conversation. Just remember, it, it's a joy just to think of the joy that it is to actually get through to a shipping decision maker. Sometimes you're going to be you know, you might get through to them the first time, you may not get through to them till the fifth, fifth, tenth, or twentieth time, but think of the joy that it is to actually get through to a shipping decision maker. The last thing you wanna do when you get through to them is blab and do all the talking. Listening is always the best policy. So sign number one, you talk more than half the conversation. Let's talk about sign number two. Sign number two is you're telling more than you're asking. You're telling more than you're asking. It's not just how much you talk, but also what you say, also what you actually say that's important. It's crucial to get your prospect talking as much as possible so you're familiar with their personalities and shipping situations. And this is challenging to do if you're not asking the important questions. Again, you're telling more than you're asking how important it is that we ask and not tell. Of course, you'll have to eventually talk more than you ask. You will have to do that eventually, but not in the beginning. Once you get a clear sense of your challenges, of the challenges your prospect is attempting to solve and their priorities, you'll most definitely take the reins and then get on your horse and start to ride it. 
Before that point, however, err on the side of asking more than you're telling. Dive as deep as you can into areas that are important to your prospect and make sure to clarify anything that you don't understand or interpret. The sales style lends itself to a, so, uh, to a slower relationship building process than showing up with a pitch at the ready after you first contact them. The last thing you want to do is have a pitch ready. The, the only thing you want to do initially is to get ready to ask and get ready to listen. And you'll set yourself up for, and, and by doing that, you'll set yourself, you'll set yourself up for success in the long run by building a foundational understanding of your prospect from the get go. So f sign number two is you're telling more than you're asking. Sign number one, you're, you're talking more than half the conversation. Sign number two, you're telling more than you're asking. Get rid of these two signs, guys. Let's talk about number three. Number three is your prospect isn't conversing with you. Your prospect, because you're doing all this blabbing and you're not listening, your prospect is actually zoning out, not listening to you or conversing with you. Let me ask you this question. Would you continue to send email after email after email to a prospect who'd never opened or responded to a single message of yours? Would you continue to do that? Well, actually I would. I would continue to send and call until I got a response. But if it's not happening, there's a reason why your prospect has gone quiet to your emails or your, your, your conversations, your phone calls for that matter. And the simple principle applies to building conversations with them as well. Are they confused about the freight service that you're offering to them? Well, possibly. Good possibility that that's the case. Another question, did you start talking about something completely irrelevant to their situation? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's the case. Another question, did you leave them any opportunity to respond or ask questions about what it is, what it is actually that you're offering to them. That's a great big probably. Great questions to ask because by asking them, you find out really why they're not talking to you. Always make it a habit of pausing while you're talking to them. Always make it a habit of pausing every few minutes to ask your prospect if they truly understand what you're saying or simply look for ways to give them an opening to talk back to you or to speak with you. Taking your prospect's temperature every so often is invaluable to making your sales conversations helpful for them and it ultimately bolsters your probability of getting their freight in motion. So sign number three, another sign you want to avoid is your prospect isn't talking or conversing with you. Let's talk about sign number four. Sign number four, your statements can apply to anybody. These are the statements that you make to your prospect, to your, to your potential customer. Your statements can apply to anybody. Blah, blah, blah. Let me ask you this question. Why are conversations about the weather so boring? Why do they even come up? Boy, if you, if you mention the weather to me, I am on to the next question. But question, why are they so boring? Well, here's your answer. Because they're impersonal and could happen between any two random people. Any two people out on the street can talk about the weather. But it really, but when you talk to your, to your uh, shipping decision maker, your potential prospect, and ask them pertinent questions, about their freight service or about uh, the freight that they're moving, that takes skill. But like I said, any two people on the street can talk about the weather. If you find that you're making generic statements and struggling to resonate, it's because you haven't done enough research on your prospect. It, it, it's that simple. Gut check yourself by listening to call recordings that you may have made or reviewing meetings while they're still fresh in your mind, these are meetings, telephone meetings that you had with, uh, with your potential prospects. Did the insights that you provided apply specifically to your prospect situation or were they overly high level and universally mediocre like we talked about earlier about the weather? 
there's one thing you never want to talk about when you get on the phone with a potential prospect is something boring or mediocre about the weather or anything you heard about in the media. Focus, focus, focus on them at all costs. If it's the latter, then dig deeper. While many of your sales conversations will run along the same lines, the nuances and minutia of every situation with them varies. If you can't get right to the heart of your, your prospects concerns and challenges, take a pause and circle back to more discovery and research before calling anyone else the first time. If that's happening to you, you've got more practice, you've got more skill, you've got a, a higher skill set to, to develop. So sign number four, your statements that you make to your prospects apply to anybody. There's nothing personal about them, not, not either to your shipping decision maker, your prospect, your customer, or the freight that they move. Sign number five, sign number five is you can't, def you're unable to define your prospect's problem. Another good reason that you're talking at your prospects is that you're unable to define their problem, their challenges and solutions that they're looking for. Another way to check whether your initial conversations are productive for your prospect is to really step back and quiz yourself. Can you explain your benefits and freight service to anyone else in an easy to understand format? Are you able to do that to anybody? Good question. Go ahead and practice it on anyone you'd like to. Every word you say during a sales process is important. That's why in my freight sales success guide, I go over that topic called word choice. Oh boy, how important it is that we choose the right words to connect and build relationships with our customers. Every conversation you have is an opportunity to drive the process forward or actually derail it. With this in mind, it is so crucial to make sure that every one of your conversations count. And think about it. As I said earlier with some of your, uh, your shipping decision makers that it took a long time to get a hold of. When you finally get a hold of these folks, you have to make this conversation count because there's a high probability if it took you this long to get a hold of them, they're not going to give you the, a whole lot of time to explain yourself. Why? Because they've heard it before. You've got to come across, not like another freight sales agent that they hear every single day, but somebody that's different. And how do you do that? By putting the focus on them. Remember, it's never, ever, ever about you. It's always about our prospects. So great topic today. As I said earlier, are you talking at your freight prospects? If you come across these five signs, again, these five signs are you talk more than half the conversation. Number two, you're telling more than you're asking. Number three, your prospect isn't conversing or talking to you at all. They're, you're, they're about to fall asleep. Number four, your statements that you, that you say to them, the questions that you ask can apply to anybody. Number five, you can't define your prospect's problem. There's a high probability that if you're, if you're witnessing any of these, you're talking at your prospects and what can I say about it? Well, then just stop doing it. Go back to my freight sales success guide and keep learning, keep reading, keep practicing. So when you make that next phone call, that next uh, phone call to your new prospect, you can get through to them easily and you can ask the correct and important questions that will get their attention. So as I said earlier, are you talking at your freight prospects? If you are, stop doing it. Okay, let's uh, move on here. As usual, I'm gonna go over my five remember topics. Remember the first one here, if you just go to your third attachment there on your email uh, and open that up, you'll see that it says, remember when you're calling your prospects and customers. This goes hand in hand with what I just talked about. And that is, you'll never change anyone's mind by preaching at them. Remember when you're calling your prospects and customers, you'll never change anyone's mind by preaching at them. Just think of somebody that has attempted to preach to you. How open were you to, to, uh, to their preaching, especially if you didn't understand or have any familiarity with what they were talking about. You'll never change anyone's mind by preaching to them. This definitely applies to your prospect as I just talked about. 
Let's go ahead and move on to attachment number four. Attachment number four reads, remember, when calling your prospects and customers, oh, such another important point, that your opening statement to your prospects, to your new prospects, to these shipping decision makers, to these shipping managers, must always answer their question. Not your question, but their question. And that question is, what's in it for me? Not me, but them. It's coming from their perspective. So remember, your opening statement to your prospects must always answer their question. What's in it for me? What do you have to say that's going to assist your prospect? It's going to assist your prospect to solve their challenges and figure out their solutions. You just blabbing about your freight service isn't going to do it. How are you going to figure it out? You're going to figure it out by asking them pertinent questions and coming up with solutions because they've told you what their, what their challenges are. Always answer their question, what's in it for me? Go ahead and open that fifth attachment on your personal email there. Remember, when you're calling your prospects and customers, again, we're moving on. Begin follow-up calls. This is after you've actually uh, made a call, made a contact with your new shipping decision maker, new prospect. Begin your follow-up calls with phrases such as, I'm calling to review, I'm calling to discuss, I'm calling to go over. This could, uh, this could be anything about what you initially talked to them the first time when they actually told you what their challenges are. I'm calling to review, I'm calling to discuss, I'm calling to go over. It's much better than saying, I'm calling to see if you have questions. High probability, when you call somebody and ask them if they have any questions, they're going to say, no, I don't have any questions for you. But when you actually pinpoint something that you spoke about earlier, and they're, you know, that's going to get their attention. First of all, it's going to get their attention because it showed them that you listened, that you actually took notes. Boy, that's, you know, when you're able to do that, you're in the top you're in the top 5% of successful freight agents right away. That you actually took notes and you made a point of bringing it back up again on your follow-up call. So, it's always much better than saying, I'm calling to see if you have any questions. Call with phrases such as, I'm calling to review, I'm calling to discuss, I'm calling to go over that challenging lane that you have from Muskogee down to McDonough, Georgia. Uh, have, have you have you found any you know have you found any trucks yet? Have you found any hopper hopper trucks to do that load for you yet? No, I'm here to assist you. Let's move on to our next attachment. Again, in our my remember series here, that next attachment states, I believe it's your sixth attachment. Go ahead and open it up. Remember when calling your prospects and customers that on your follow-up calls again, don't ask prospects if they received your first initial email info. If you look at my Freight Sales Success Guide, I give you a sample email to send out to all, first, uh, to all prospects for the first time. Well, when you follow up, don't say if they received your info. What do you do? Assume that they received it. Don't make that email a reason for calling them back. So again, and really when you think about it, that, that, that's somewhat of a lame excuse for calling. Did you receive my initial email? Do you have any questions about it? Well, first of all, they could say yes or no. Second of all, they're not gonna have any questions about it. Thirdly, as I said in my last uh, remember topic, when you pinpoint something that you actually spoke about on your first call, that's going to get their attention. Why? Because it shows that you listened. It shows that you care. It shows that you have some class and that you're going to, you're going to follow through just by showing them that you listened. So, uh, don't ask, don't ask if they received your first initial email. Assume that they did. Don't make that email a reason for calling. Make their challenge that they shared with you a reason for calling. Oh, that is so important. Last one here, guys. Uh, open up that seventh attachment. Remember when calling your prospects and customers. This is uh, on a side note. Be very selective in the people you hang around with. 
Oh, how important it is to be very, very selective in the people you hang around with. Separate yourself from naysayers and dream squashers. For those of you that are on your way to becoming successful freight sales agents, how many of you hung around with individuals that were not uplifting to your dream of becoming successful in this profession? I'm saying it right now. I'll say it again. Be very selective in the people you hang around with. Separate yourself from naysayers and dream squashers. Whoever they are, regardless of who they are, separate yourself from them. Or if you wanna keep hanging around with them, don't talk about your dreams and your aspirations to be successful if they're only gonna you know, cut you down or, or squash your dreams. Great topic today, as I said earlier. Again, the topic is, are you talking at your freight prospects. For those of you, if you have any questions about this topic that I just went over, or you have that dream of becoming a, a successful freight sales agent, and another dream of joining our top-notch freight office, give me a call. My name's Ted Keys. My call number is 626-309-9141. Been a great topic. Great uh, spending time with you today. Take care. God bless. I will see you on my next conference call on Tuesday. You've just taken a tremendous step forward by watching and applying my Tuesday conference call highlight. Do you desire to earn and learn with our top freight team and Christian-based office? Yes? We're searching for a self-starter who's serious, motivated, and ready to take action right now. Is that you? Go to tedkeysonline.com slash contacts and enter your contact details. We provide top-notch freight agent sales training to you. Then you deliver those same skills with confidence to the freight industry marketplace. I'll talk to you soon.